What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Figure It Out, Out of the Basements Action Figure Talk Show. I'm Nate, joined with Justin. What's up, guys? And today, we're going to be ranking the Black Series vehicles in the 6-inch line that have been released so far. So, we're including the Tauntaun, and we're including the Speeder Bike. And this goes all the way up to the Snow Speeder, which was just recently released. And if you haven't checked out my review, check it out. Yep. It's a doozy. Yep, we both have it. There's actually one right below. It's kind of hard to you see. You can kind of see it right here. It just doesn't fit in the frame, but it's there. So just imagine the awesome, massive snow speeder right there. We got to get some fake snow. We need to go to Hobby Lobby. Yeah, or Michael's or something. Get some good snow going. We're also going to be discussing some Black Series rumors as well. So let's just jump right into it, Justin. The rumors are from our favorite Black Series news source, mm -hmm. yakface.com. So, of course, in walmart.com's system, there was some new coded Black Series figures. Now, we have a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Although, according to Yakface, this conspiracy is incorrect. Right, but it's fun. But it's still fun to discuss. Um, so basically, the new coded figures, there's five figures, and it's SWBL Wisconsin, Virginia, Indiana, Illinois, and Florida. Now, Justin was doing some thinking earlier. Sometimes I think. <laughs> Not too hard, I hope. Now, I came up with a little conspiracy that this is the Bad Batch. Someone had commented on there, like, oh, is this the Bad Batch? Because there's five members at the end, including Echo, and there's five states. And one of these states are ours, our state. Yep, Indiana. So I, was, I was thinking, Indiana, the crossroads of America. That's like our slogan or whatever. I don't know, like, slow motto state motto or something Be it beats me crossroads of america so i was thinking crossroads crosshair i think it's similar enough if this was the bad batch that indiana crossroads of america crosshair is a member of the bad batch and then i was thinking about the other states one of them is virginia so i was thinking virginia tech i'm not familiar with the ncaa college football or anything like that but i know in some college sport, that's like a big school, or at least I've heard of it plenty of times. So I'm guessing it's one of the biggest colleges in Virginia. Yeah. So I was thinking Virginia Tech, Tech. And then I was like, after that one, I was like, okay, this has to be right. <laughs> Crossroads, yeah. Crosshair, Virginia Tech, Tech. Yep. So that leaves Wisconsin, Illinois, and Florida. So I was like thinking like Florida, oranges, Wisconsin has cheese. <laughs> wow. I, I was like, <laughs> I was looking up the like state birds, like the state bird of Wisconsin is apparently a cardinal and nothing. I was getting nothing. I was getting no other ideas because I know like the University of Wisconsin is Wisconsin Badgers. I was thinking Illinois, land of Lincoln, like nothing was popping out to me so if you guys know how the other which it's hunter wrecker wrecker and echo and echo if you guys know how that fits with wisconsin florida and illinois comment down below i just thought it was a neat little thing to talk about because virginia tech indiana crossroads of america crosshair i don't know exactly which we, I guess we could briefly mention, even though we mostly talk about action figures on here, the Bad Batch show that was also mm -hmm. announced. So that kind of also put that idea in my head. It's like, okay, we got these rumors, and then a couple days later, Bad Batch is getting their own series on yeah. Disney+, Plus, yeah. which is apparently somewhat taking place post-Order 66. How does that work? Do they not have inhibitor chips? Because they're the Bad Batch? I don't know. I'm sure they'll explain it. Yeah. Guaranteed. But that's pretty cool, though. I'm actually pretty excited. Yeah. Um, I enjoy it. I enjoyed that arc. In terms of, like, the next Star Wars animated series, I kind of would have liked if they went something Old Republic-related. Mm. That was my hope ever since 
Clone Wars and Rebels. I was like, it makes sense now that, and they did Resistance as well. I was like, the next logical step would be to like go way back. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, it's more clone content, so I'm down for it. Right. So now, on to the main topic of the show. We're going to be ranking all of the Star Wars of the Black Series 6 inch vehicles, including the Tauntaun and Speeder, which are technically deluxe figures. Right. But their vehicles. So like the Wampa is not going to be included, even though that was like sort of the same assortment. But we're on a high right now because we both got our hands on the snow speeder. So not wasting any more time. Let's get right into it. Our going from least favorite to our absolute favorite. Yes. Coming in at number eight is the Tauntaun. Very dated. Yeah, it it feels like. A toy. It feels like a toy you would buy just like general merchandise. Yeah. For when something comes out. Not like a collector's toy. Right. The, the so like you have the assortment of the Han Solo that comes with the Tauntaun, and then the Luke that comes with the Wampa. The Wampa, in terms of quality, is so much better in terms of the detail and paint. Yeah. And then you have the Tauntaun that just feels like a cheap kind of like a cheaper toy from the toy section. I totally agree with you. The Tauntaun, it, it's like I'm happy I have it because it's Black Series. Right. And it's, you know, a creature, vehicle. Yeah, it goes in, especially now with all the Empire Strikes Back stuff that we have. Right. We're filling out the Hoth diorama. So certainly happy I have it, but it's definitely my least favorite. Coming up next is Ray's Speeder great figure now pretty much everything from here on out is great yeah i like i love every single one uh the ray the figure that it comes with how she has the goggles on yep. i like that she looks good when she's on it the speeder itself it's bulky it's a nice hunk of plastic good i like details. how it comes with the debris and the net but from the new trilogy i really do like the force awakens yeah we both do but also, the speeder is only in one moment. Right. It's not very... You can say the same thing about every all <laughs> these suppose. other ones. Uh, but it just has... it. The other vehicles are like... Have it's reached, not as iconic. Right. Iconic. Yeah. There's not... Not enough time has passed for Ray's speeder to become the legendary mm -hmm. item. Yeah. But I, I like Ray's character in yeah. The Force Awakens as a scavenger, and especially that opening scene, like uh, scavenging a fallen Imperial Death Star, mm -hmm. or Star Destroyer. So I do enjoy the vehicle. Yeah. It's good. Good use of soft goods on, the, a stand on the figure, on it. too. Yeah. Yeah, you can articulate it on the stand, mm -hmm. so you could have it like leaning to the side. You want to do like a little action pose or something. Now we just need Tito. Yes, I would love. <laughs> I would. I'd probably still buy a Tito. That's just Tito, Tito. on his little creature thing that he's walking on, trying to get the net on uh, BB-8. BB yeah, I'd take it. Good old Tito. Man, I love The Force Awakens. It's a great movie. It's so much fun. Action packed. Why'd they have to ruin it? We're gonna alienate everyone. Yeah. We have different opinions, guys. Coming in at number six is the Emphis Nest Swoop Bike. Now, this is one I don't have. True. And this I picked it up I on clearance. Have. So that already kind of said something. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, I picked up... We both picked up most of these on clearance. I've only paid full price for two vehicles. All the rest of them, I've paid significantly less for. All right. All right. Fair enough. Uh, but the swoop bike, it's actually really awesome. It is kind of lacking in detail, but what it lacks in detail, it makes up for in just being Massive. absolutely enormous for yeah. no reason. Um, I mean, it is correctly scaled. True. It is very large in the movie. And of well, course, you get the Emphis Nest figure, which the soft goods aren't the best. It kind of has like a big, poofy, dumb collar and, look. And the character... And the character. And kind of the movie. No, I... Okay. <laughs> Solo is the second best Disney Star Wars movie. I've got to give that to Rogue One mm. over Solo for me. I guess I, I, I've seen Solo more recently than Rogue yeah, One. Yeah, I as well. I actually 
I recently rewatched it. Um, although it was Netflix, so I didn't see it in 4K. <laughs> but uh, I gained a newfound respect for it. But I'm still like whatever on it. That is pretty much why I didn't get this. I didn't go out of my way to get it. If I did miraculously find it for super clearance, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But I still like it. I think it's just a cool vehicle. And finding it for so cheap, I think it, I paid like 20 bucks for it. Yeah. So anytime I cross a v one of the vehicles, because like I paid around that for Luke's Land Speeder and Ray's Snow Speeder. So it's like you come across the vehicle and it's only $20. You're like, this is the price of a regular figure now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I get all of this. Right. But that's why it kind of ranks lower. But it is cool just because it's so big and it's a swoop bike. And I personally like the Emphis Nest figure design, even though the character is kind of whatever. Mm -hmm. Up next is Luke's Landspeeder from Star Wars 1977. Great piece. It is a great piece. You can put Luke in there, squeeze Obi-Wan in there. You yeah. really got to squeeze him in there because yeah. of that hard plastic. Uh, stick, stick R2 on the back yeah, horizontally, and, and 3PO can sit on the ledge in the rear. Get your sand troopers, get your do back. You could have a nice little move along diorama. Yep. And you can also pop the hood open. Yeah. And Luke comes with that poncho and the hat and the long rifle from the deleted scenes i believe well he has the the long rifle well i mean the the poncho and the hat oh i the think poncho and the hat yeah yeah which are great you could use the poncho and personally i put mine on qui-gon jinn because it kind of looks mm -hmm. like qui-gon's poncho the land speeder also has some really great details too in the hood and the back panel that comes off i always have a jawa pose next to mine looking like he's running up to tinker with it or something it's a great piece. Yeah. Excellent diorama potential. It's just a no-brainer. Yeah. Now we're getting into the no-brainer category. True. Luke's Land Speeder, that's a no-brainer. Absolutely. What is up next? It's the Biker Scout with the speeder. Great piece. Great clearance memory. Great figure. Because yeah. that was the only time, that was the only way you could get the Scout Trooper, one of the most iconic yep. Stormtrooper designs. And it was locked, scout trooper. locked in a vehicle yep. set. But the vehicle is great. There's some like scrapes on it, some battle damage. Mm -hmm. You could peg the feet into the pedals. You could have him holding the handlebars. He's got the flight stand that yeah. you can turn it, but it usually gets too heavy and it right. topples over. So They made the attempt. They, they tried, but w once you factor in the weight of the figure, mm -hmm. it's like... Eh. Which, which this is what I meant by earlier when I was like, it's only in one part. Right. <laughs> like, you can bike. say that about a lot of things. The do-back. Although, now in The Mandalorian, we have... True. Although, I'm sure it's a different model of Imperial speeder bike. It's a different color, They're more least. so, like, mercenaries. Yeah, it's, like, darker, I think. It's, Black. It's, like... It's, like, light, it light? gray. It's, like, light oh, gray. Oh. You know, we have Ewoks coming in the Black Series. You know they're not just going to do TiVo, so... True. Or it would be awesome if they released, like... Leia with the speeder or yeah. on or an Endor Luke with the speeder. Yeah. Up next is going to be the First Order TIE Fighter. Ooh. Got this on a discount. I don't have this one. Yeah, you don't have this one. I picked it up in one of our vlogs when we went to Kokomo Toys and Collectibles. Yeah. It's massive. It's the largest vehicle that they've produced in the 6-inch line so far. It's probably as big as they'll ever go. Mhm. Mm would probably be my number one if it wasn't first order and i i hate to sound like a star wars purist right but when it comes to collector items i would rather have it exactly how i want it and i would rather just have original trilogy i would rather have an original trilogy tie fighter because the first order tie fighter it's actually the opposite paint scheme because remember when i said i was a little tempted to pa paint it i actually looked and it's pretty different mm. so the first order tie fighter the base like the ball is black and then the sides are gray well the imperial one the base is gray and the sides are black mm. so it's like opposite and then with the first order one you have that red yeah because uh, it's from the force awakens which granted 
it's from the force awakens and i really like the force awakens but our what i would call severe disappointment in the last jedi and rise of skywalker i'm kind of just soured i'm like i'm i'm not one of those guys right because i if you like the new stuff i respect it yep i respect it it's, and I, it's and called having different opinions about movies and not getting upset about it. it. It's We're not toxic about it. We're yeah. not, you know, going on the actors' Instagram pages and harassing them as if they had anything to do with anything. Because right. we're not directing that hatred at anyone besides the movie. Right. The finished product. Yes. Because obviously we know people worked hard on it. We just didn't like it. Yep. And that's fine. But... It's massive. The There's like a turret thing on the bottom that you can spin around. The cockpit opens. You could stick the pilot in there. Or Finn and Poe, if you have those figures. That's cool. Because yep. it does have the two seats. has the window where you can see the pilot in it. Other than that, not much customizable stuff compared to something that comes later. True. You probably already know what it is. Right. But that's why it's a few pegs down. Wish it was Imperial. But... Still pretty huge, very satisfying to look at. Yeah. I'm honestly surprised, though, that Hasbro hasn't just given us a repaint, essentially. Right. Because I think it would sell if it was the original Imperial TIE Fighter. Coming in at number two is a borderline masterpiece. There's only one thing I don't like about this. The vehicle part, I would say, is masterpiece. Absolutely. We're talking about the do-back. Now, the part that's not a masterpiece is that shitty candy plastic stormtrooper, sand trooper that they, yeah. that they included with it that's made out of, like, the world's cheapest garbage it, plastic. It, it looks like cake. Yeah. It looks like cake material. I'll never get over that sand trooper. Yeah. Because take a look at the orange, white, or black pauldron sand trooper. Look at the overall quality of the plastic and the paint. Not even to mention the horrible paint mm -hmm. of the doo-doo troop yeah. that comes with the doo back. I hate that figure. But it does come with the stick, the yeah. electricity poking thing. So that's cool. And obviously the doo back, super iconic from Star Wars 77. I love the Tatooine scene. I love sand troopers. I just love the aesthetic of troops that have just been out in the mud in the sand and the dirt yep. they're doing their job for the empire and they're getting dirty yeah and like we were saying great articulation great details on the figure the tongue yeah the tongue <laughs> the tongue is randomly the best part because it's <laughs> articulated and the jaw opens and when you start messing with it all together you're like they didn't have to do this right it could have just been a closed mouth or it could have just been open, bottom jaw, tongue mm. is attached. Right. But they went the extra mile. There's toe articulation. Yeah. Really nice head articulation mm. as well. They really went above and beyond. It's super with customizable yeah. in terms of the articulation and the tongue and the mouth. Wish I would have got more than one. I think I'm satisfied with the one just for spatial issues. Well, yeah, of course. But I Which... would... I would say the reason I wouldn't argue it for a number one is the figure that it comes with. Mm. It's just, yeah. it's... Yeah, it holds it back. It does hold it back, just a slight peg. A although, slight peg. Although it is nice, because I wouldn't want to bow my the legs on one of my good sand troopers, so I keep the shitty one up there, because I'm sure he has bowed legs at this point from right. being posed around it. True. So, True. you could be wasted on that one. But, Jarek... There's only one vehicle left. You guys know what it is. This is something that I actually geeked out over. Like, I can say I was actually playing with this. Uh -huh. If you check out our Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> this is, of course, the Snowspeeder from The Empire Strikes Back. That comes with Dak Ralter. Mm -hmm. He's on the Luke body. New head, new helmet. Well, different paint on the helmet different belt yeah different there's some different details on the body as they, well they didn't wedge him where wedge has a lightsaber clip on his x-wing yeah. <laughs> costume the, such a great idea it's something we actually complained about with the hoth luke that it didn't come with i we literally said this yeah. exactly what it comes with we said he should have came with the ion grenades that he uses to throw in the atat's underbelly and then we also said he should come with like the harpoon grappling gun yeah 
and the snow speeder comes with both of those things two of the ion charges weapon storage yep. on the ion charges and the grappling gun Hothluke and Dak both fit in there perfectly there's so many customizable things the cockpit opens super detailed on the inside you got the turret you got the flaps you have like four flaps you have two on the top two on the bottom you have the gun blaster thing that comes off and you could it exposes like the mold on the inside like the wiring and yep. so you could tow have like cable yeah tow cable with the string and there's like a compartment that you can pull the string to retract it there's the three different landing gear things all the details inside the cockpit yeah, the paint the tar i loved specifically looking in the back of dax and seeing the targeting system panel right. And I just like seeing those those dots, just like the targeting systems of Star Wars have always been so iconic. So it was really awesome to see that little panel. I was just like, man, that is a great detail. But yeah, on the outside, tons of great battle damaged yeah. looking paint apps as well. Both of ours have the correct Z's yep. on the cockpit. We both got correct <laughs> Z's. So I was happy for that. I was a little yeah. worried, but there's scuffs, there's battle damage, there's like... Right. And I said this in my review, but it's great that something like this comes with DAC. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you wouldn't necessarily go run out to the store and go, Oh boy, I gotta get that DAC figure right. for 20 whole dollars. Which, you know I would! Well, I, I don't know, I got Wedge on a discount. I so you wouldn't get, like, a Porkins? <laughs> no, bag? I'd get, dude... <laughs> I hope if they make an X-Wing that the, the pilot that comes with it is Porkins. <laughs> I'm down. Like, And this is just proof that we need an X-Wing. Yeah. I it'll, think it'll be more... It'll obviously be bigger. This is one... These are the T-47 snow speeders are one of the smaller ships in the original trilogy. But this piece is also huge. Just like if I pick it up from right here, it is literally blocking the entire view of the camera that's how absolutely massive this this speeder is it was worth every penny some people were complaining about the price i think once we've seen the details and obviously the inclusion of a DAC figure it makes sense and i think this is worth it and i think buying something like this and supporting it is how we're going to get more mm -hmm. vehicles maybe fast track the x-wing also could lead into other things like like a wing we've said, like we've said on the channel a wings or diorama pieces millennium falcon cockpit right jabba's palace size up the vintage collection version to a six inch one Ooh, i'd love it if they would do that with the troop transport from the mandalorian yeah so those were our vehicle rankings Eight to one. Snow speeder's the best. How would you rank the vehicles? Which one's your favorite? Have you picked up the snow speeder yet? We recommend it. It's an essential Absolutely. piece. Absolutely. It's big. It's really big. I don't where did you put yours? It's on top of my Detolf shelf. Nice. Gotta right find a spot for it somewhere. <laughs> right now, my snow speeder, the home is the table. <laughs> the home is the table for the moment. I'm reorganizing my collection though, and I'm actually going to be releasing a collection video very soon. My first ever Black Series collection video on this channel. But I'm rearranging my collection. So there you go. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. We're always talking about Star Wars the Black Series on the channel. Of course, I'm Nate. Joined with Justin. See you guys later. We'll see you guys next time on Out of the Basement.